if you're like me and you enjoy playing Car Mechanic Simulator 2021, but don't like the way that the game doesn't let you use your steering wheel and pedals to drive your carefully crafted creations around the truck, then this video is for you. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can get your wheel and pedals working with this game. If you enjoy Car Mechanic Simulator 2021, check out my YouTube channel. At Shred's Garage, we build cars, we customize them, we do budget builds, we do beauty contests, all sorts of challenges. Check out the first episode linked in the description below. The game doesn't have native wheel support, but the game does have gamepad support. Those analog controls on the sticks and the triggers are our way in to get the steering wheel working. We're going to use a program called X360CE in order to map the steering stick to the wheel and the triggers to your pedals. To begin with, check out the URL I've got linked in the description below. It will take you to this site, x360ce.com. This is where we're going to download the application that's going to do the mapping of the controls. We're going to go ahead and click on download for all games. Next, we're going to open the zip file and copy it to a universal location. I'm just going to drop it here in my C drive. Now we're going to launch the application. Next, we're going to click add game. And this is where you're going to find your car mechanic simulator installation. The path should look something like this if you're using the standard installation path with Steam. After that, I double clicked on the icon to add the game. Now we're going to select that game from the menu and start customizing our controls. One step that's very important is to make sure that you don't have an actual Xbox 360 controller connected, as I have found that it does tend to cause problems and complications when mapping the controls. So here's my game profile, and this is my controller select. You may find that if you've moved your desk around a few times or replugged your controllers, you'll have duplicate entries. You need to make sure that you select the one with the green status icon because that indicates the entry which is currently active. Now that I have the correct controller showing up with the green status icon, I can start to map buttons. So at this point, you should now have your controller showing up with the green status icon. You should have the correct game showing up here and you should click enable to make sure that the controller is responsive. Now, if I go ahead and click on the button I want to assign on the virtual controller, I can press a button on my wheel and that maps it. I just mapped the X button on the G29 to the A button. As you all know, it's the equivalent position for a PlayStation controller, which is what this wheel is based on. So now I can click B and then I can map the leftmost face button, I can click Y, map the triangle which is the upper and then I can click X and map the square button. Easy peasy. So next I recommend that you map the paddle shifters to the triggers. So if I click on the right bumper, I pull it and you can see that it's now responding every time I pull the trigger. Now for the left paddle shifter, and that's been assigned. Next, what you can do, rather than having to map each individual D-pad button, you could just click in the middle, and then if you start moving your D-pad around, you'll see that it automatically follows your movements and maps it to the entire D-pad. We're almost there, as there isn't a lot of controls that are actually used from the controller in Car Mechanic Simulator. The last three things we need to map are the steering and the pedals. So, if I go ahead and go to the X axis, I can click record and I can simply turn my wheel. Now you can see that's moving rather slowly because it's assigned the full rotation of the wheel to the stick. So in order to get past this and get a bit more of a responsive driving experience, I'm just going to bring up my G-Hub for a moment. Now, for the sake of this exercise, we're going to set a persistent profile. This is going to enable us to map the game profile 
to the X360 profile. And by game profile, I simply mean the profile that Logitech G-Hub has assigned to Car Mechanic Simulator. Otherwise, you could just set a persistent and static profile. So if I go to Car Mechanic Simulator, I could set that as my persistent profile. If this pops up, you wanna go ahead and click yes for the time being to ensure that the profile remains consistent for your testing. Now we're just gonna go into our wheel settings and limit our operating range to 270. That's what I consider to be the sweet spot. Set your centering spring strength to 30 and ensure that centering spring in non-force feedback games is selected. This will allow you to move the wheel only as much as you can see it rotating on screen. And this is about the optimal operating range for this game. Plus, the centering spring will prevent you from going too far. You can push past it, but it does provide a basic guideline that's good enough to make sure that you're not overturning past the operating range. Now that we've set the operating range, we're gonna to return to X360 CE. We're gonna make sure that we have the correct profile set. And you can see how much quicker the stick on the left is moving left and right. This is about the right place you want it to be in order for the steering to feel alive and responsive. We're gonna do some more tweaks to that in a moment, but first let's finish assigning the controls. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click on the right trigger and I'm gonna depress my accelerator pedal. You can see it jumping around a little cause mine's a bit overdue for a recalibration, but that's me pushing the pedal all the way in and releasing it. You can of course tweak the dead zone if you're getting some weird play the way I am. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on the right trigger and then depress the brake pedal. If you need to tweak the inputs, you can go ahead and modify some of the settings shown here. Um, for instance, if it's going in the wrong direction, you simply invert it. If you guys run into any problems, I'm happy for you to drop me a comment and I'll help you out. So now we're just gonna add a little bit of fine tuning to the steering because as it is, this won't quite cut it. A lot of controller based racing games tend to have a lot less responsiveness in the middle so we're going to fix that simply go down to this row of tabs and find left thumb then what we're going to do is we're going to click this invert button here and that's going to make it more sensitive towards the center and neutralize that issue that we talked about so now i'm going to bring this up to about 30 percent And that's about the sweet spot. At this point, you wanna make sure you save everything you've done. Now, when you wanna use this profile, you need to make sure that X360 is running in the background before you launch your game. We're gonna go ahead and launch the game now. Now, once you're in the game, you need to make sure that gamepad is selected as the control method or else your steering wheel inputs won't work. I recommend that you do this at the last moment before you take a car out for a drive. Otherwise, it can make navigation a little bit tricky. We can then navigate to the racetrack by using the controls we mapped on the steering wheel after we set the gamepad as the control method. So I'm gonna right click, go to settings, and I'm gonna change this to gamepad. I'm now going to use my gamepad to navigate. Just gonna use my mouse to point at the map. Press X. We're gonna to head to the racetrack. So if I press down on my accelerator, you can hear and you can see that I'm now accelerating the car using my pedal. And I can brake as well. I've got access to those analog controls through the magic of X360 CE. And I can change gear using my paddle shifters. You will find that the cars feel a lot more alive when you're using these controls. 
and you're going to start using more realistic strategies such as easing the power on coming out in and out of corners well more so out of corners one thing you will find the game will tend to give you a little bit of a dead zone when you're driving at speed so there's a little bit of a dead zone right now i'm moving the car i'm moving the wheel about 10 degrees and the wheel's barely moving at all however this effect does amplify a little bit as you drive at higher speed but that's okay because we still have a very decent and responsive range of motion within the wheel so just then i was dipping the wheel just shy of 90 degrees probably about 80 degrees going into that corner i'm at about 80 degrees now and i gotta say this certainly beats using a keyboard and mouse or a gamepad so guys that's all there is to it if you have any problems or you run into any weird bugs uh, using the software or with G-Hub or with any part of this process I'm more than happy to help out just drop us a comment below the video and we'll see what we could do to get you up and racing if you enjoyed this video and you do like Car Mechanic Simulator 2021 we actually put this whole setup to the test I actually used my wheel in a video where we benchmark three different cars going around the track to lay a baseline of what a good track time is and what a slow track time is. It's actually the first of many videos where we're going to be doing all sorts of builds and modifications to cars, uh, doing budget build challenges, beauty contests, and best of all, we're going to be taking these cars with our G29 and thrashing them around the track. We're even going to be doing some drag strip challenges and all sorts of other things. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and check out my other videos. And as I always say on this channel, if you can't build your dream, you should still dream your build.